Hello there, and welcome to Kid History. My name is Logan, and I'm the creator of the Kid History Learning Series. Kid History is an educational podcast and book series made for children. Today's episode is called, Let's Learn About Edinburgh. We'll learn a little bit about the history of Edinburgh and how it became the city it is today. There are many historic buildings to enjoy, and you'll love taking a stroll along the Royal Mile. Afterwards, we'll stop by Edinburgh Castle and visit some of the city's other famous attractions, like Arthur's Seat. Don't worry if you aren't too familiar with Edinburgh's notable citizens and traditional foods, as we'll learn all about them. Finally, we'll experience some of the city's traditional sports and find out why Edinburgh is known as the Festival City. Did you know that this podcast is also available as an illustrated children's book on Amazon? Links can be found in the description below for my social media, YouTube channel, and other books. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe, rate, comment, and tell others about this podcast. Are you ready? Let's learn about Edinburgh. The History of Edinburgh The earliest signs of Edinburgh's first inhabitants was in 900 BCE, near an area known as Castle Rock and years later, a group called the Gaudens began building a city in the area of Castle Rock. However, another group called the Anglis later attacked them and took the settlement. The Anglis combined the name Iden with the word Burra, which is the English word for fort, and created the name of Edinburgh. Despite constant battles against England, Edinburgh was able to grow into a large city, and it became the royal capital of Scotland. The city would become well known for its wool and leather exports during the 14th century, and the increase in trading brought more citizens. Edinburgh's population grew to over 50,000 people during the 17th century, and the city became very unsanitary. It was constantly being affected by plagues, illnesses, and fires. Edinburgh's city limits were expanded in the 18th century in order to provide more sanitary spaces for its citizens. England and Scotland were no longer at war, and designers of the new part of the city could focus on adding gardens and parks instead of military defenses. The city was expanded, allowing for more space, and it helped prevent diseases from spreading easily. The city has since cleaned up and is one of the most visited cities in Europe, with millions of tourists coming each year. Edinburgh's Historic Buildings Greyfriars Kirk is one of the oldest buildings in Edinburgh, and it was built by Franciscan friars that were known as the Greyfriars. The Kirk has been the location of numerous historical events, and its cemetery is known for housing numerous historical monuments. One of the most famous monuments of Greyfriars is dedicated to Bobby, a terrier that famously sat next to his owner's grave for 14 years. Bobby was adopted by the friars and became a part of the friary. Today, a statue of Bobby greets visitors, as it's been said that rubbing his nose brings good luck. St. Giles Cathedral is a church located in the heart of Old Town Edinburgh, and it's over 500 years old. The cathedral has been home to many historical figures in Scottish history, such as John Knox, who was the church's minister after the Scottish Church Reformation. The Reformation brought religious changes to Scotland, and the cathedral became known as the birthplace of Presbyterianism. Holyrood Palace is the official residence in Scotland of the English monarch, and the Queen of England comes to visit once a year. You'll know if she's there by the yellow and red Royal Banner of Scotland being flown outside, and if a group of royal archers are standing guard. It's been the home of kings and queens of the Scots since the 16th century, and much of its history has been preserved for visitors to enjoy. Holyrood Palace is situated at the end of a road that leads to Edinburgh Castle, known as the Royal Mile. The Royal Mile The Royal Mile is the main road through Edinburgh's Old Town, and it runs between Edinburgh Castle and Holyrood House. Its name comes from it being the traditional processional route for kings and queens of Scotland for hundreds of years. Historic buildings like the Museum of Edinburgh and the John Knox House are located along the Royal Mile, 
and they provide visitors a look into Edinburgh's past. The area located at the top of the Royal Mile is known as the Lawn Market. It is located next to Gladstone's Land, which is one of the best locations to view buildings from Old Town Edinburgh. The area below Gladstone's on the Royal Mile is where the St. Giles Cathedral is located, and it has sat on the Royal Mile since being founded by King David I over 900 years ago. The cathedral has been one of the most visited locations for Edinburgh visitors because of rich history that it's tied to the city. Outside the cathedral are a set of special stones in the shape of a heart. These stones are known as the Heart of Midlothian, and they represent the location of the entrance to an old municipal building that was called the Old Tollbooth. It served numerous purposes, but it was most famously known for being a prison. Don't be surprised if you see an Edinburgh resident spitting on the heart, as this is a long-time tradition of showing disgust towards the prison and those that were once kept there. Places to Learn The Museum of Edinburgh is located in the iconic and historic buildings on the Royal Mile, near the Scottish Parliament. It is home to Scottish artifacts such as the National Covenant of 1638 and the Collar and Bowl of Greyfriars Bobby, which we learned about earlier. The museum holds numerous beautiful collections of decorative art, including Scottish pottery and Scottish porcelain, dating back to the 18th century. The Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh is one of the finest botanic gardens in the world. The 72-acre facility is located one mile from the city center, and it offers visitors tranquility in the busy city. The garden's history dates back 350 years, and it's home to giant redwood trees and a world-famous rock garden. The Botanic Garden offers visitors beautiful views of the Edinburgh skyline and Edinburgh Castle. The Royal Edinburgh Zoo was opened in 1913, and it's the only zoo with a royal charter in the United Kingdom. The zoo was designed to be different than typical zoos that would usually keep animals behind bars and in cages. Instead, Edinburgh Zoo was designed to have vast open enclosures that would use ditches or moats to separate the animals from the visitors. The zoo still remains at the forefront of zoo enclosure design and has won awards for the natural habitats for their animals. Edinburgh Zoo has also worked with penguins for over 100 years. Edinburgh Castle Edinburgh Castle dominates the skyline of the city and has been home to Scottish royalty for hundreds of years. The castle is also home to Edinburgh's oldest building, called St. Margaret's Chapel. Today, the castle is home to pieces of Scottish history, like the Honours of Scotland, which are the oldest crown jewels in Britain. The crown, scepter, and sword are made of gold, silver, and precious gems. Edinburgh Castle also holds the Stone of Destiny, which has been used to crown monarchs for hundreds of years. The castle was changed to serve military purposes during the early 17th century. It became a significant military base and added defenses, such as Dury's Battery, to help protect the city. It also added the Queen Anne building to house soldiers, and it's still being used by the military today. During the 18th century, Edinburgh Castle would be changed again, but this time into a prison. However, some prisoners managed to escape through a hole in the wall that's still visible today. The Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo is an annual performance by military bands that takes place at Edinburgh Castle. It began in 1950 and includes military performers marching through the castle gatehouse to a fanfare of pipes and drums. The first tattoo attracted over 100,000 attendees, including Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, who enjoyed the final night of the inaugural production. Edinburgh's Attractions Arthur's Seat is one of Edinburgh's most famous and recognizable landmarks. It's an extinct ancient volcano that stands over 822 feet tall and is over 300 million years old. It was created by a glacier exposing the jagged rock crags below the surface, and some legends say this was the location for Camelot, 
King Arthur's legendary castle. Visitors can walk to the top of Arthur's seat and take in views of Edinburgh's beautiful city skyline. The National Monument of Scotland on Calton Hill is Scotland's national memorial to the Scottish soldiers of the Napoleonic Wars. It was originally created in the Greek Parthenon style in reference to Edinburgh often being called the Athens of the North. The monument was later abandoned and fell into disrepair. Architects have offered to help fix the monument, but citizens of Edinburgh have agreed that they prefer it the way it is. The Royal Yacht Britannia is the yacht of Queen Elizabeth that was in service for 43 years from 1954 until 1997. The Queen and her family were known to use the ship on their annual Western Isles tour around the islands off the coast of Scotland. Britannia would sail over one million miles before it was retired in life, and the ship currently hosts more than 250,000 visitors each year. Notable Citizens Thomas Sean Connery was an Academy Award-winning actor who was born and raised in Edinburgh. He was known for portraying the fictional British secret agent James Bond, and he also received the American Film Institute's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2006. Before becoming a world-famous actor, Sean Connery worked as a milkman in Edinburgh with St. Cuthbert's Cooperative Society. He also had a reputation as a tough guy because of a rumor that he once single-handedly fought off a group of gang members. Dolly the sheep was the world's first mammal cloned from an adult cell, and she lived at the Rosslyn Institute located outside Edinburgh. Dolly was important because she brought attention to cloning, and she would help scientists learn more about the use of stem cells. Years later after Dolly passed, she was donated to the Museum of Scotland, where she has become one of the museum's most popular exhibits. Alexander Graham Bell was born in Edinburgh and would go on to invent the telephone. He lived with his family on South Charlotte Street, and today a stone inscription marks his birthplace. Bell also devoted time to helping the deaf population throughout his lifetime, as he had family members who were hard of hearing. One of his goals was to make life easier for the hearing impaired. Traditional Foods Haggis is Scotland's national dish, and it's a local Edinburgh favorite. It can be found being served in local pubs and restaurants throughout Edinburgh. The dish is not for the faint of heart, as it's made with oatmeal and meat parts and then cooked into a pudding. The dish may not sound very appetizing, but those that have tried it say that it's delicious and would definitely eat it again. Haggis was a popular dish for the poorer citizens, as it was made with cheap cuts of meat that would have normally been thrown away. Shortbread is one of Edinburgh's oldest foods, and they are sometimes called petticoat tails because of their triangle shape. They were also known to be a favorite treat of Mary, Queen of Scots. The biscuits are cooked with only three ingredients of sugar, butter, and flour. It is a popular food during Christmas, and it can be part of a formal tea. Shortbread is also given to married couples when they enter their new home as a symbol of good luck. Porridge is one of the most often eaten foods in Edinburgh, and it's part of a traditional Scottish breakfast. It is similar to oatmeal, and it's made with oats and milk. Oats were used because they were inexpensive and a sustaining food that was perfect for the inclement weather found in Edinburgh. Brose is a type of Scottish porridge that has been eaten by local farmers for over 500 years. Brose was a great source of food for local farmers who needed to stay full all day. Sports in Edinburgh The game of golf was in part developed in Scotland and some of the first Scottish golf courses were in the fields of grass where sheep grazed. Golf has been played in Edinburgh for over 200 years, and it was here that the first rules of the game were created. The goal of a golfer is to hit their ball into a hole on the course in as few strokes as possible, and the courses of Edinburgh are known for being some of the most challenging courses in the world. Association football is the world's most popular team sport, and it's very popular in Edinburgh. The game was originally known as folk football, and it was played in fields outside the city. Football's popularity grew, and in 1872, 
the first national match was played between England and Scotland. Today, games are so popular that some of Edinburgh's local football matches can draw tens of thousands of fans who love to sing their favorite Scottish football chants. Curling is a winter sport that is played on a long sheet of ice in which players slide round stones toward a circular goal called the house. The winner is determined by who gets their stone closest to the button, or center of the goal. Curling originated in Scotland and has been played in Edinburgh for over 500 years. The city is also home to the Great Caledonian Curling Club of Edinburgh, which has been playing the sport for over 150 years. Festival City Edinburgh has been dubbed Festival City due to the amazing festivals that take place all year long. We've talked about the Tattoo, which is one of the festivals, but there are some other well-known festivals, such as the International Festival and the Fringe Festival. The Edinburgh International Festival is held in August each year and attracts thousands of musicians and performers from all over the world. Venues are located all over Edinburgh, and the festival offers dance performances, musical concerts, and theater shows. The International Festival often attracts hundreds of thousands of visitors to Edinburgh each year. For three weeks in August, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival becomes one of the world's greatest celebrations of art and culture. The festival started in 1947, when theater groups turned up without invitation to perform at the Edinburgh International Festival. They found themselves having to perform on street corners and random public places. The festival kept going to include showcases in various talents such as theater, comedy, dancing, circus, and opera events. Today, the festival attracts performers and visitors from all around the world as they take in shows in all sorts of places. The true meaning of the Fringe Festival is that anyone with a story to tell is welcome to perform, and they can be performing at any venue willing to host them. Recent festival shows have taken place in subway stations, coffee shops, and even elevators. Let's review. We started by learning about the history of Edinburgh and about some of its famous buildings, such as Greyfriars Church. Then we took a stroll down the Royal Mile and stopped to learn about the penguins at Edinburgh Zoo. Our journey took us to historic Edinburgh Castle, and while there, we learned about the world-famous military tattoo performance. Now we know a little bit more about some of Edinburgh's notable citizens and what types of traditional Scottish foods they might have liked. We finished by learning about traditional sports like curling, and we were able to take in a performance during the Fringe Festival. Until next time, welcome to Edinburgh! Who knew that there'd be so much to learn about Edinburgh? I hope you enjoyed learning with me about how Edinburgh became what it is today. I had such a great time learning with you, and you've made learning a lot of fun. Remember, this podcast is also available as an illustrated children's book on Amazon. Links can be found in the description below for my social media, YouTube channel, and other books. Finally, and most importantly, never forget that you're special, you're perfect, and you're loved. See you next time.